Hi everyone. I know it has been such a long time since I have done a video and I'm about to tell you why. You may notice that the background is a little bit different because I have moved into an apartment. <laughs> so I'm just sort of giving you a little peek of what it is uh, the disaster central here. Um, I don't have a stitch of makeup on. It's the end of a long week where I moved and am just going through some life changes, shall we say. In a couple days, I'm supposed to be going to, I mean, I am going to be a speaker at Vegetarian Summerfest, a place that I have wanted to go to forever. And um, I finally got in as a speaker this year, speaking about my middle child, my book, Kitchen Divided. Why? Because, in theory, I am supposed to be the textbook case of how a divided kitchen can work when somebody is not vegan. And um, <laughs> so, I suffice it to say, I'm going to, like, I already have actually revised the, the talk that I usually give on this topic because so many things have changed in the last month. So the sequel to this is about to be written. In, in this book, I attempted to help people bridge the dietary rift and find ways to peacefully and creatively coexist in the kitchen. What I did not focus on was the equally important and challenging ethical rift that often accompanies the dietary one. Not necessarily at the same time or at the beginning, but as very often the vegan in the family uh, begins to understand that veganism is not just a health-related diet, but more a moral stance against the exploitation of our fellow beings on Earth. Now, you know, I've always known this. I was a TV reporter and covered some of the worst animal abuse stories that, that I could uh, at the time, but I still had the disconnect. And uh, if you're eating animals or if you are around other people who are eating animals three times a day, you have to disconnect something in the brain. And lately, I have been saying, I won't ask anybody else to do what I am not prepared to do. And I do wish that I had addressed this a little bit more in this book, for I suspect that many of my readers have been struggling with the very conflict of values. And it's within the kitchen and beyond and especially in their relationships. So for those vegans who move a little bit deeper into the ethical aspect of what they are doing, um, the rift can become insurmountable if the other person remains divided on both levels. And I, I never promised you a rose garden. I never promised that a kitchen divided would become united. And there are times when the dietary and ethical chasm just cannot be bridged. Such is the case, such was the case with me as my husband simply refused to accompany me on my journey, both healthfully and eth ethically. He even had a friend, one of his best childhood friends from grade school that we had lunch with who lived fairly close. And the last time we got together, he, he was saying, uh, Clarence, like, you live with one of the best vegan cookbook authors in the country. Why don't you just eat what she makes? And he just said, I can't. And it breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart because I see his health declining, and the statistics are that if you don't change your diet within a year, especially in his case, he's had two, two uh, stents, not bypasses. He had two additional bypasses in addition to the stents, but... The stents especially are, are weaker, and within a year, if uh, you are lucky to have a second chance like he does, um, it often doesn't uh, work out. And so, there are limits to how much distance we can endure in any relationship, and those limits have reached their max in my circumstance. So I can say officially that our kitchen divided has imploded. Sometimes it, it just can't be made to work. And that was the situation for me. I'm a firm believer that it can work. And I encourage you to 
to keep working at it and give it the old college try and, and do everything you can. Um, but it's just that for me, I must have a partner who shares my values as they have evolved. And beyond veganism as a mere dietary choice and into the true meaning of the word, that the non-exploitation of animals. And try as I did, he just would not go there. Sometimes we have to face up to realities like that and move on, as I am now doing. So stay tuned for the sequel, which will have a final line of be true to yourself, because that ultimately is what you have to do. I tried everything, took him to all the movies, stayed in the hospital 24-7 for more than a month, as the hospital encouraged I do. They said, you know more about nutrition than we do, so bring in your Vitamix, make smoothies, uh, try and get rid of his colon blockage, otherwise he has to have surgery, and um, that did not happen because I brought in food from the outside. <laughs> so... And just one other thing. I mean, it's more than just, I mean, forget the whole concept of being vegan. He wouldn't even eat the vegetables, a vegetable that I would make. It got to that point. So it would have been nice if he had been vegan, but just to totally blow it off and not take it seriously. Thank you for listening. I know I'm sort of in the raw here, and um, I have prepared some of the words that you heard previously, but what I have written, and um, actually some others have helped me write, um, it comes from my heart. And one of the things, if you've been following on Facebook, I did just want to mention uh, there was a great link. As I posted this on Facebook, somebody posted a link to a blog about watching suicide be committed in slow motion. And that blog, especially the title, just really describes more than anything how I have felt, and I, I just can't do it anymore. And I hope you understand. And if you have questions or comments, see me below. Gotta run.